Well, from Lauren Bacall to Lana Turner, the femme fatales of the 1940s had distinctive walks, talks, and undeniable style. There's a new book that looks at the costume designers working in that era of film noir and the impact they had on the entire fashion world. Kimberly Truller is the author of Film Noir Style, The Killer, 1940s, and she joins us this morning. Good morning. Hello, how are you? Doing great. <laughs> Good to have you with us. So we, we say film Thank noir, you. we, we, we kind of know what it is, but uh, what, how do you describe it? What's, what's the definition of it? Well, it's certainly the darker side of Hollywood. Um, so, you know, with the advent of World War II, Hollywood started to explore a few more dark themes, mm. <laughs> which did include murder from time to time. <laughs> uh, but as the book shows, it was all done very stylishly. <laughs> so, you know, we think of trench coats and hats and people saying, dame, skirt, you know, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but there's a lot more to it than that. I, I didn't realize that it was the costume designers in Hollywood that really came up with these looks. These were very, these were not being done anywhere else. No, I mean, especially when World War II hit, it sort of shut down all of the European, you know, the center of fashion, as it were, and Hollywood really led the way when it came to fashion trends. Um, what's really interesting about the women in this book who are all very strong, whether they're good girls or not so good girls, um, but it, it was, I call the costume designers their co-conspirators because often the femme fatales were dressed very respectfully Effectively, um, even when their intentions were not so. <laughs> huh, so you're saying that's what they set out to do is to convey strength through the clothing. Did that carry over to uh, the regular person in regular life? It did. I mean, in, for the first time, Hollywood was really looking at what mainstream America was going through because there was rationing at the time, which extended to clothing. And so that really forced the more minimal aesthetic, the more austere look of the 1940s. And so Hollywood costume designers really had to balance, you know, showing what real women were wearing while also offering um, some aspirational glamour for the war. Years. You also say, you know, most uh, most style was influenced by Europe prior to that time. Did Europe become influenced by American style after this? Absolutely. And I, I want to say that Hollywood was really um, trend setting even into the late 1920s, certainly the 1930s with costume designers like Adrian and Travis Banton. So there was a lot of give and take, but when the 40s came about, it was all Hollywood. So these designers, uh, did any of them become famous or did they, did they uh, find great fortune in what they have uh, invented? Well, some of the things I explore in the book is how many of these costume designers came from the world of fashion. They were fashion designers before, and many of them, Jean-Louis and Irene, for example, also had fashion lines concurrent with them being costume designers. So there was a lot of intersection, even though costume design and fashion design are very separate things, and let me be clear to not conflate the two, um, but there was the stories really do intersect. So, I mean, a lot of people know Edith Head the best because Edith was astounding at her own publicity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, if she had lived in the age of social media, she would have just been killing it on Twitter, let me tell you. <laughs> One of the most decorated, I think she won the most Oscars of any costume designer, mm -hmm. didn't she? Is that She who? did. Okay. Eight Oscars and 35 nominations, the most by far of anyone. So any of those 1940s trends still around today? I know we're coming back to shoulder pads for ladies. Are the guys going to start wearing fedoras again? <laughs> it would be great to see men in hats again, Come wouldn't on, it? Larry. Uh, really? Yeah, dress it up. Oh, I mean, the, the book goes into, I mean, you know, the strapless gown from Gilda, for example, we see it on the red carpets all the time. Um, Ava Gardner's gown from The Killers. And then just even suiting like uh, Joan Crawford's and Mildred Pierce, she wears a navy pinstripe pencil suit, which, you know, so many of us include in our 
career wear wardrobe. So there's a lot of influence still going on. Well, it's fascinating. Once again, the book is called Film Noir Style, The Killer 1940s. You can get more at glamamore.com. And there's the info on Twitter. Kimberly, thanks for being with us. Thanks so much for having me.